S Gibbs here for another exciting edition. It is not your den, it is not my den, but it is the Mad Den, aka the Laser Show, the internet's most passionate show about John Madden Football 2011 EA Sports. Show number 69. Show 69, continuing with our back to the basics uh, breakdowns. Today we're going to talk a lot about. Um, Basic defensive coverages. So we're going to talk cover four, cover three, cover two, cover one, cover zero. What they all mean, when you want to call them, why you want to call them, how they work, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, uh, and really allow you to be able to utilize them uh, best with, with your audibles, your quick audibles, and, and really set you up to start playing some solid defense uh, with, with any team, really. Um, first off, I'll say thank you. Uh, this is the thank you show Wednesday. Appreciate for all you guys out there watching and tuning in. I, I appreciate again uh, you guys tuning in every day. To, uh, check out watching me ramble about uh, this video game. But um, again, send in your stories about uh, your favorite Thanksgiving hol uh, Thanksgiving favorite Christmas holiday. Um, well, winner, whoever has the best story, most unique, funny, makes me laugh. I just like it overall. We will send you a free good uh, free book, free guide. So make sure you take advantage of that. It's a good offer, good chance you know to get a free product, something along those lines. Uh, but without further ado, let's get let's get into the breakdowns. Uh, no, no, no big deal to talk about the Patriots today. Uh, middle of the week, it's you know not too much going on. Big game of the week tomorrow. Uh, hopefully, playing against Farles. Uh, I'm gonna put the heart out. I'm bringing something new to the, the table with the defense. So uh, we're really gonna be able to uh, bring the smack down on Z Farles. So let's get this party started. Let's get the, the enough uh, the jibba jabba, and let's get the zoomy zoom in. Uh, zoom, zoom, zoom. Uh, zoom, zoom, zoom. So here we are. Zoom, zoom. For those that you didn't know, guys, this is the laser. Oh, oh, where is it? The laser show. Personal thank you to everyone tuning in. Thank you. Show number 69. Madbible.com. Follow me on Twitter, skip 7 Get me there. So today, what we're looking at on the defensive side of the ball is we're taking a peek at what I like to take a look, break down cover 4, cover 3, cover 2, cover 1, cover 0. So first and foremost, what we're going to take a look at is the cover 4. Now one of the things I like about uh, on defense is always having the ability to have uh, the ability to play a cover four, cover three, cover two, cover one. Um, so typically a good idea, a good strategy is to come out as a cover four. We'll go over that a little later and I'll tell you why. Uh, but first what we're going to look at is the cover four. Offense, the red skin, we'll just take any play. So the first and foremost with the cover four that we want to go over is that the cover four has four defensive backs deep. So we look at our strong side, our weak side, uh, Defensive back, Spencer, he's dropping back into a deep blue zone. So that means he's playing a quarter of the field, the deep part of the field. He's playing one quarter of it. He's dividing it up with his other defenders. We next move to the safety, free safety, who's, again, playing another quarter of the field in a deep blue zone. We next look to the other safety. This safety's playing another quarter of the deep field. Look at our last defensive back, our strong side CB. They're, again, splitting the deep part of the field into fours. Now, a cover four is weak against the flat. So any type of flat route that you would run, and a flat route consists of this part of the field, this part of the area, the short part of the field uh, towards the sideline. Anywhere about uh, five yards and into the line of scrimmage is, is considered the flat area. So a cover four, because they're playing so many defenders deep, they're very weak against the flat area. So if you ever suspect that you're going against a cover four, you want to be able to um, attack them in the flats. Now, another area where cover four is weak is flooding. So if you flood the defense with, with routes, combination, so you have one guy on a fly route, a go route, another guy would come, uh, come underneath that with a slant, and then have a drag come underneath, uh, that would be considered flooding. You're, you're putting more offensive players into an area where the defense just can't match up. So you're sending more offensive players then the defense has numbers four. So the cover four, um, that's that's a, the, the weaknesses of it. Typically, you also find a cover four isn't from a 46 formation, usually from um, like a quarter set, a dollar set, with, which has a three down line. So that means that it's going to be weak against the run. 
For this instance, though, we're on a 46, so it's you know a little stronger against the run, not as much in coverage. Uh, but we'll go over the strengths of what the cover four is. So cover four, if they're if you have an opponent that really likes to play and um, throw a lot of deep routes downfield, so if they send a lot of streaks, a lot of goes, and deep patterns, cover four is going to do a great job at stopping that because again, we have a lot of defenders deep. We're trying to stop them going deep. We're literally saying to the offense, you could get everything underneath us, but we will not let you hit us deep. Uh, and, that, and that's the goal of the cover four. Uh, cover four is also great um, at stopping typically the middle part of the field because our other part of our defense is going to be centralized in that area. As you can see, we have three yellow zones, so they're centralized in the middle part of the field. So we're going to go over each of those progressions that we were talking about um, and, and showcase to you what that looks like there. Another point to mention about the cover four where it's weak is that it's, it's weak in run support. And I say that because it doesn't have the safety step up in the box. So the safety here is dropping back initially. So on the run, they're not going to be looking to attack. Uh, we'll show you what that means a little later. I'm going to take a look at the cover three. So cover four has the four DBs going deep. Uh, the first area we said that they're weak is the flat area. So on, on this play we here, we have two go routes on the outside, two flats, and an angle over the middle. So we know the cover four that both the deep go routes should be covered. The angle route should be covered over the middle of the field with the centralized zones, but the flat routes should be weak. So let's take a look at what that looks like. We'll go to each of our options. First, we'll go to the go route on the far right. As you can see, that it's defended because of the deep safety help, the, the deep uh, DB dropping deep. Now we'll go to the other side, <coughs> cover four again. Right side of the field is covered. And I'm not able, it's an interception by the defense, and I'm not able to pick up the play. So we'll look at that, what that looks like an instant replay. And you can see how that works in the cover four. So you can see the safety is dropping deep. Here you have it again. Now, if uh, the, the go route, there's, just, there's nowhere really to throw the ball. I throw for the interception. Let's see if we have another play. So here's, here's a four vertical scheme where they're all running deep. Typically, if you're playing a different type of zone, um, this could really attack the defense if they're playing cover three, cover two, anything along those lines. Because they're on cover four, we have a hat and a hat. The pass rush gets in, bad throw, interception to uh, our centralized zones over the middle of the field. We'll take again, look at what that looks like uh, in instant replay. So here you have it. There's the cover four. As you can see, every single route we sent downfield has a hat on a hat. So hat on a hat, hat on a hat, hat on a hat. So that's what we're looking like there. So again, the cover four is great. Um, late game situations, a lot of times you can hear um, it maybe consider, be considered a prevent type defense because you don't want to get beat deep, give everything up short. So maybe if you're late in the game, you have a big time lead, uh, consider calling the cover four. If you, or if, if you want to play a bend but don't break defense, play a cover four, give them everything underneath, hope for a bad read interception, or hope for uh, a fumble or something along those lines. That's how you're, you're going to play defense with a cover four. Now I'll also show you, uh, that's the main strength of the cover four. Now we're going to show you its major weakness. So cover four, as you can see, flat, wide open, literally no one there to cover the flat. Uh, we'll hit it again on the other opposite side. And as you can see, I was able to get upfield for about 10, 15 yards. Uh, it's just the design of the cover four. Cover four does not protect against the short sidelines of the field. So as you can see, the streak does a great job. Pulls the, the safety into coverage. Underneath, he allows that, that flat route to just sit open, wide open in the flat. And it's the same on the other side as well. As you can see, the flat route wide open, hit him over the middle of the field, uh, over the sideline part of the field, and uh, scamper up for big time yards. Now, again, you'll see here, I'm going to go over the middle of the field, middle of the field. And I, I was able to complete it because of the depth of the zone. But as you can see, I had to throw the ball into deep, heavy traffic. So, Here's the cut over the middle of the field, and you can see all the linebackers right there to, you know, even if he caught the ball, they're there to aid and take him down. But as we zoom out, again, you can see both flats wide open, both deep routes covered. Uh, so there you have it again, the, the cover four. Uh, we'll show you a, a flooding technique that we were talking about before. So here you have it. Motion over Santana Moss. So now what we're doing here is we're sending a flat route, a slant route to the sideline, and then a go route. So what this essentially is going to be doing is uh, the, the deep go route is going to pull the, the deep CB way deep. 
the, the slant route is going to get underneath him, and the flat route will be underneath him even more. So we're really forcing the defense to play that side of the field. And as you can see, the defense just can't. With, with the numbers that we have there, the defense just literally can't guard all those options. Uh, and we'll go into the instant replay. We'll show you what that looks like again. So here you have it again. We have a drag route. And even off, off of that, look how good this angle route plays. And that, that halfback angle played this defender like a fiddle. Played that, look, look at that. He left the flat route and went to the angle route. And look at how this route progression over here worked wonderfully. So say for whatever reason that uh, your opponent was playing this user defender and they jumped this route. Well, guess what? Our flat route still underneath, still unco uncovered. And then what we would do behind that, another playmaker we might do, put this deep defender, call play where he's on a post. So this defender, again, he's going to cover that slant, put that post in there, right into where no one is covering him. So flooding a cover four defense, again, is just another great way to attack it. And as you can see, the route progressions just cover and really work the zone. It's more offensive players than the defense can cover. Just a very basic concept. And literally, you can, you can hot route all those options. Um, as I said, a, a streak, a slant to the sideline, a drag, motion all the way across the formation. And those are all just hot routes, guys. We talked about that earlier in the week. All hot routes, all hot routes. And as you can see, it was terrible huge play on my part there. Uh, so that is the cover four in a nutshell. We'll also show you that the cover four is essentially it's very weak in the run game just because... Uh, the deep safety plays back, as you can see here. Uh, so he's weak in the, no, no area for the run game to get support. We're going to need a great play by the defensive line to be able to stop it as we got there. So that's the cover four. Now when you take a look at a cover three on the defensive side of the ball. So another important aspect of why we say would you want to come out in a cover four. Every single defensive playbook, every formation has what they call, they're called quick audibles. Quick audibles are um, hot routes that you can make. Uh, from the defensive uh, defensive strategy pad that can give you a cover three, a cover two, a cover one, a, a cover three, a cover two, a blitz, um, and a two-man under, which is a two-man under is a cover two over the top, playing man-to-man. -man. So we're in a cover four here. So uh, with our cover three, we'll take a look at my controller. This is what you want to do. You want to tap the audible button twice and flick the right joystick left. What that does now is that brings us into cover three. So now we're in a cover three. Now, what a cover three means is that you have, again, we look at both our outside DBs. Outside DBs drop deep into coverage. And then on top of that, what we have is our deep free safety that was going deep before. Now they're dropping back. And now these three defenders, what they're doing is they're splitting the deep part of the field now into thirds. So now we have less defenders in the deep area, but now we can concentrate on different areas underneath. So where the cover four was weak was in the flats. It was very weak in the flats. As you can see, the cover three actually has two flat defenders, which make a cover three a great defense to stop flat routes. Uh, cover three also has a great uh, support over the middle. So uh, even against middle passes, middle routes, you're still going to have good support over the middle of the field. Uh, so cover three is actually, if you're going to pick a, a zone type defense or the best type of defense to play, you have good support deep, you have good deep support short, you're still bringing a pass rush. Cover three is, is typically your best option when you're playing zone because it just has a lot of different looks. Um, some weaknesses of the cover three, however, are the deep corner routes. So you have deep corner routes. So uh, for example, this uh, defensive back is dropping back. If we sneak a corner route underneath him, once we send a go route to pull him deep, that deep corner is, is not protected because we don't have anyone in that deep corner area, as you can see where, they're, where they're, it's uncovered. Uh, the cover three is also very weak in the, in the slot seams. So the slot or our slot receivers right here. In the seam route, as you can see, there's just no defenders in that area. So cover three is weak um, in the seams and in the corners. Uh, cover three is also very, very great. Um, at stopping the run because remember before uh, watch this defensive back you know, see how he's up in the box this is called the box where it's uh, between the line of scrimmage about five yards and in it's called the box so we have the strong safety that watch him when it audible back to the cover four see how he drops back so the cover four he was out of the box he wasn't there for run support now when I audible to a cover three uh, he's there for run support so now we have extra protection extra d defender in the box to help us in aid stopping the run so a cover three is a great formation to use and help in stopping the run. Uh, another area where a cover three is very weak in defense 
is a four vertical scheme. So remember before, um, on offense, we, were, we, showed, we showcased this play where we had four streak routes. Now, a cover three that just simply mathematically can't cover that because if they're sending three defenders deep and you're sending four wide receivers deep, you're going to have one guy that's was just uncovered. There might be a defender in the area, but for the most part, they will be uncovered. Um, so we're going to take a look at all these options. So first and foremost, there's the cover three. On offense, what we were running before, uh, we said put two, two deep routes on both sides. We have two flat routes and an angle. So we'll show you the, the cover three, what it looks like now compared to the cover four. So here's my snap. I'm going to look to go square. Square again is, is covered. There's a deep sa deep uh, support over there. Um, where there wasn't support this time, where there was before, if we take a look, is the inside seam. Remember before, there was a defender right here. So if I maybe did a pass lead to the inside there instead of a pass lead down deep down the field, I might have completed that pass. So let's take a look uh, what that could have looked like if I, if I read that it was a cover three instantly right off the bat. So here we have it again called hike, maybe pass lead inside. And I caught it for a touchdown. Just like I said, that's where the cover three is weak in that seam area. So as you can see here, there's no support there, no support there. A pass lean inside, go for the catch, uh, and you're able to get the, the big, big game there. Now, what we were showing before, weak in the cover, cover four was the flat. So now we know how the deep sideline streak works. Let's take a look at what the flats are going to look like. So on defense, we're going to audible to our cover three, which again is audible, audible. Left on the stick brings us into cover three. And remember, that's a universal concept. That's any formation. Audible, audible, left, or left on the right stick brings us into a cover three. So here, my flat read before, as you can see, the defender's in the area. And anytime you throw the ball when the defender's in the area like that, bad things can happen. Uh, so we'll show you what that looks like again. Defense is in a cover three. So here you have it again, snap and throw, and I waited on it, bad read, defender defends the ball in the flat. So uh, if you're getting hit a lot in the flat and you want to be able to still kind of protect deep, a good, a good bet is the cover three. So we'll take a look at the right flat this time, right flat, right flat, and again, just defender in the area. I can't throw it sooner than that, the pass is completed. We'll show you now what the angle route over the middle looks like. Remember that before, angle route was, was open initially, but there were defenders in the area. So here you have it again, snap, ball, throw. Again, defenders in the area, you're taken down. It's a minimal game, but again, there's defenders in the area, so you always have to be careful of that. Now the cover three, we'll show you again what it looks like if we throw a four vertical scheme at it. So here's the cover three with a four vert scheme. And that was a bad ball by McNabb, uh, but we'll, we'll run it again one more time. So here we have it again, four vert scheme, snap and throw, McNabb, bad throw again, see what's happening here is this, my receiver in the slot's getting jammed, uh, <clears throat> we'll try and bypass that just to give you the example. So here we are again, the cover three scheme, four vertical routes, here it is. So as you can see, the deep, that deep middle safety, as you can see what we're doing there, is we're forcing that deep safety to make a decision. We're saying, pick which one to guard. And as you can see, at the far left here, we have this receiver's covered because of that deep safety, the deep route. Um, actually, you can take a look here. This deep cornerback actually decided to leave this, this far streak open. Uh, he chose to cover this streak, which, you know, a lot of times you'll see that. You'll see that the, the defender will make a bad decision on who's, who's open. But when we take a look from the sky cam, uh, we, can, we can see the four vert scheme working. So as you can see, the, the underneath routes have their, their depth. They're having our, our underneath route covered. But as the route in the play progresses, the deep routes really start to open up. As you can see, there's one, two, three defenders, one, two, three, four guys going deep. This is called a vertical passing game, uh, which we talked about before in an earlier episode of Madden TV. But... Um, so, you know, this is a way, you you know, with a cover three, you got to be very, very careful with, with a cover three with, when running this because if they run a four-vert scheme, something like this can happen for a big game, uh, for a big touchdown. So uh, we were talking about before that the cover three is great in run support. So here you have it. 
cover three is great in run support because we have the extra defender in the box here, snap and go. And as you can see, the, that safety is actually the defender that made the play on the ball. So uh, we'll take a look at that again. That safety, because he's up in the box, he's able to get in there and make a play, slow down the ball carrier, uh, and cause major headaches for the offense. We'll show you what that looks like um, if they were just in a cover four. So as you can see, the cover four, here's the deep safety. They're, they're playing back. Their initial move is going to be dropping back. And what happens is there's no one else in the box, and I'm able to actually get some yards out of that time because uh, there's one less defender in the box, one less guy I have to worry about, um, and I have the advantage in the running game at that point. So cover four, no, no against the run. Cover three, yes against the run. So our next uh, defense uh, that we are going to look at is a cover two. If you're a Bears fan, you're probably going to recognize, yes, the Bears play a lot of cover two. Um, cover two is a great defense. Uh, a lot of teams really rely on the ability to play a cover two. The cover two relies a lot on the ability to get a good pass rush from your front four. Um, and just as the cover three was a quick audible out of every formation, the cover two is a quick audible out of every formation. So we're going to show you again what that looks like on the camera. Audible, audible twice. Flick right on the joystick. And now we're in a cover two defense. Now cover two. Let's explain what a cover two is. Cover two, as you can see here, before the cover four and the cover, uh, cover three, our outside DBs were dropping back into deep zones and helping to split the defense, the deep part of the field into either a quarter or into thirds. Now, the cover two, you have these outside DBs jamming the outside wide receivers at first, and then what they're doing is they're just playing the short part of the field. They're playing the flat area. Now both safeties in a cover two are playing the deep part of the field. They're splitting the deep halves of the field. So what they essentially are doing um, is we're looking to play a lot of the, uh, a lot of everything short. So we have five defenders short. So there's one, three linebackers, and then a second guy over here. That's five guys sh short. So we're trying to take away any read that the, the offense might have that's sh over the short part of the field. Uh, and that's the main strength of cover two. The cover two, believe it or not, is, is very weak in supporting the run game because, again, this uh, defensive back is no longer in the box. Uh, so you have a less of a chance to actually um, have an extra defender in the box unless you mainly drag, uh, drag him down. And that defender is also is dropping deep into coverage. So their first move isn't towards the running back. Their first move is to drop back into coverage. So cover two, two safeties deep. It's very strong against short passing in the flats. Uh, very strong attack there. It's very weak against posts over the middle. So if you have a wide receiver running a go and then over the middle, trying to split these safeties, you know, have one safety drop back deep. This one drops back deep, and then we sneak a route right over the middle. Um, a lot of times, what you'll see is a tight end route. So if we get a tight end in the line of scrimmage, we can send him on a go route and against the cover two. They'll get open in space between the safeties. Uh, cover two is also very weak against any type of corner route. And when I mean a corner route. Um, is, is behind this flat defender and away from this deep defender. So we're going to go in this area here. Literally look where the open space is on the field. Both of these corners and in, in this deep seam here. So that's where the cover two is weak. It's also, again, very weak against a four vertical passing scheme because, again, if we send four deep and there's only two defenders deep, they can't mathematically defend the four vertical passing scheme. So... Cover two is a good in, in third and one, third and two situations. Cover three is good in literally almost any situation. Cover four is good in third and long situations. So third, ten, third and ten, third and fifteen. Cover four is a good spot to call. Uh, third and one again, third and two again. Cover two is good, and anything really in between, probably a good bet to call cover three. So we're going to go back to that original play that we had before, and again we'll show you the go routes on the sideline are great against the cover two because. You're forcing these uh, deep uh, defenders in the secondary who are playing towards the middle of the field to protect to the sideline, and that's a real difficult task for them to defend against the sideline. So you're first going to see that these are wide receivers are going to get chucked. They're going to get jammed by the, the flat routes uh, and see if we can sit that behind the, the routes there. And as you can see, Taylor Mays, though, great defensive player in the backfield, but as you can see, he can't even recover. Uh, but what you want to see here what's happening is everything short is defended. You can see sh defended. Defended, defended. But as you can see, I was saying before, the deep sidelines are open. And again, he's open, he's open. And look at all this vacant land. This, 
This looks like, this is like what the West must have looked like back in the 1800s because look at all that land. My goal right now, next time I see a cover two, is maybe to consider motion at my halfback, send him on a go route, and try and fit a route right in into all that space. Um, so there you have it, the cover two. Um, you're trying to split the, the DBs uh, in the secondary. So we're going to run that same scheme there. Again, it's it's square, square, right on the stick, gives us our cover two. That is a universal concept. You can do that from any formation. Uh, so here I have it again. This is what I want to do before. I was saying streak the tight end, halfback, and then in, in this instance, motion him out uh, and look to get him to split that deep part of the field. And that's exactly what we did there. And I can't, I can't get the ball to Torrin. Uh, but as you can see, it's it's literally everything we wanted and more. Um, this safety was drawn to this deep route. This safety was drawn to that deep route. And look at that. We snuck that deep route by the halfback in and behind Patrick Willis, who, yes, he is a great linebacker, but as you can see, he can't even cover all that land. Only Lewis and Clark can. Um, so now we'll show you what it looks like, uh, the cover two against those flat routes that we were running before. So now, you know, you're playing a cover two, and you think, okay, throw the flat route. It's covered. So the minimal gain... Flat route's covered. So here you have it again. Cover two. This flat route on this side is covered. Almost picked to the house. Um, so again, that part of the field is covered. Uh, so now we also said that the deep um, sidelines are, are covered, the deep corner route. So what we're going to do is put these receivers on um, slant outs. They're going to mimic that deep corner route. We're going to call the cover two. And we're going to show you where that that space is behind that cover two. And McNabb just didn't really, didn't really make a good throw, but what's important is to see is to see the concept behind it, how that works behind it. So as the receiver gets chucked, as you can see, the chuck slows him down, but that deep route here is going to pull that safety deep. And as you can see, the, the flat route just isn't paying attention to that slant behind him because that's just not his assignment. He's playing the area on the field, not the man. Um, and you can sneak that corner route in there behind him. Uh, it works the same thing on the other side, as you can see, same way on the other side, sneak it in, go up for the catch, and try and get in the end zone for the big, big play. So cover two, cover two really is a good, uh, good formation, we'll, we'll show you, uh, not formation, it's a good play, especially to stop any type of run, or any type of short pass, uh, if your opponent likes to dig and dunk you, consider playing a cover two, or if you have a slower defense. So again, we're going to run the ball, but as you can see, this deep safety, not in the, in the, in the area to play in the run support, so we pick to choose to run the ball uh, and just mash it down the throat, pick up for six yards. I want to show you again what that looks like if you call a cover three, because if you call a cover three, he's in the area to play uh, and defend against the run. So here you have it. Wrong formation, but... So I want to show you what this looks like. So just have this visual in your mind right now. So you see this play here. Look at all the defenders in the box. There's four down linemen and there's four linebackers plus that safety. So there's eight guys in the box. Now if we go back and look at our other play, look at now there's only seven guys in the box. And that, that safety that was down here is now up here away in run support. And watch what happens. That safety, that safety drops back. Watch him drop back. Drops back. He completely takes himself out and aid to support the run. Uh, but this time... He's up in the box. His first initial move is going to be short so he can aid in the run support. Call hike, call hike, and there you have it again. He, that's, it makes all the difference in the world. It really does. It's a simple, simple concept, but it's something that makes all the difference in the world if you want to be able to stop the run. So there you have it again. Able to stop the run, that quick cover three, and bingo, bango, bongo. Lock up on D. This is the guy that makes it happen. Before, he was dropping the coverage. Now he's aiding the run support. Nowhere to go. So that is the cover two. Now, cover zip, call, now the next progression is a cover one. Now, you can't really play a cover one on defense. Essentially, you could. It would look something like this. But I don't ever really recommend calling this because you're, you're so vulnerable to pretty much everything because there's no support deep. So a cover one, yes, a cover one means that there's one defender deep. But a cover one is typically referred um, to when there is 
Um, only one defender deep, and it typically means that there's going to be some pressure on the quarterback because someone is blitzing or someone is, is doubled up on a wide receiver like so. So they doubled him up or um, they're, they're going to they're blitz him off the edge or they drop him in a hook zone over the middle of the field. So that means there's an extra defender somewhere that's not covering someone. His, his assignment is to blitz the quarterback, something along those lines. So cover one is typically man-to-man. -man. Uh, you might typically see a bump and run coverage. Uh, you're going to be looking uh, to see, maybe typically expect a lot of pressure. Um, it's very strong run support because, again, we have that extra defender in the box. Uh, some an area where cover one is weak is in crossing patterns. So a lot of drag routes, uh, a lot of uh, flat routes, any type of uh, pick route is where the cover one is weak. So when we see a cover one, we don't really want to the, – the way we were playing before was zone. So see it with zone, what we're doing is we're, we're creating a lot of space where – you know, we're sending guys out wide, then we're sending them deep, we're angling out over the middle. So against the man-to-man, uh, -man, our goal is to create natural picks and natural rub routes. So our friends, what we can have are drag routes. So these two drag routes run over the middle of the field. They're going to cross up coverage and hopefully set a little pick, a, a, a movable pick, a legal pick on the defender. And when you see that, uh, that's that's when you want to call, when you expect man-to-man, -man, you want to call a lot of dr drag routes and crossing patterns. Um, another way you could do that is a slant, or you could do an in, and you guys all know about the in slant and drags from earlier in the week, back, or back to basic segment, understanding hot routes. Um, so cover one, sends pressure, one safety deep, oh, oops, messed that one up. So one safety deep, bump and run, that's what you can expect. So on offense, we got to expect pressure is coming. We try and run some patterns, and again, see how there was pressure, there was bump and run. It just, it literally, it rocked my world. Uh, so there you have that. The pressure comes in. Not much I can do about it. We'll try that again. So when you see bump and run like this, you typically want to be prepared, um, prepared to throw a lot of quick passes. That's where passing the ball out of the backfield becomes ideal or sending guys in motion we talked about before so sending the guy in motion here trying to beat that bump and run get a beat on the wide receiver and if hopefully we can get a good pass from McNabb uh, but cover one is a very good base defense because you're not really rushing too many at the quarterback to the point where you're completely uh, naked in coverage you have one user defender deep which is great so that you can still aid deep and not get beat deep um, it, and you're still able to get a lot of pressure, you, you feel pretty confident. So I would say the cover one is the equivalent to the cover three. So the cover one man-to-man -man is the equivalent to the cover three zone, where it's a very versatile, it's going to be the zone that you want to call upon the most, it's going to be the man that you want to call upon the most. So uh, that's the cover one, and we'll show you what that looks like against the run. And again, they're blitzing, and again, we have all these defenders in the box which is, again, great for run support, as you can see. Run support, wasn't able to hit the hole with Tor Ryan Torrin. He's a slow back. Run support is great there, uh, once again. So, cover one is great. Uh, uh, you have a user safety deep. I'll show you what that looks like. So here's the, the pressure's coming again. Trying to pick up the pressure. You know, we're going to look to go deep. But look, over the top, we have Taylor Mays who bats the ball down. So that's what's good about the cover one is that you have that deep support, you have that deep help, or maybe you know, you're getting beat in the flat, you take your user defender and make a play on the ball. So cover one it gives you a great ability. It's not all out, it's not too aggressive, it's not too passive, uh, but it, it can be considered a, a more basic uh, every down type defense. Now our last basic defense is called the cover one, is called the cover zero. And our cover zero uh, literally means what it's called. Our cover zero, um, is an all-out blitz. It's something, uh, what it means is that there's no safety help over the top. We're really just trying to get to the quarterback. Sometimes it can, might be considered desperate measures, um, or it might be just for the type of defense that a very aggressive player might play. Um, so in this play, we have a cover zero. Typically, when you see a cover zero, um, you know, you maybe expect a gap pressure, especially in Madden, uh, or maybe expect overload on one side like we see here. Um, this is what you'll see a lot of the times. Um, but expect the A-gap pressure. You're typically going to see a man-to-man -man defense behind it, maybe some bump and run, uh, but the difficult part about it covers, uh, the cover zero is that it's very, very 
it's very, very easy, not easy, it's very susceptible to getting beat deep. Um, you have that chance every single time you call the ball, call the hike to get beat deep, especially if a good wide receivers, fast wide receivers. Um, and we'll show you here what happens if you do get beat deep. Santana Moss goes up and tries to get the ball, not able to do it. So if you have a speedy wide receivers against uh, a slower defense as the Niners are against the Redskins, uh, you have the ability to get hit deep. I just, I'm not catching the ball there. It's not coming down. But, again, you have the ability to get hit deep. Uh, the flats are going to be covered, so the pressure is coming quick. Flats are covered. Uh, crossing patterns work well against it. Uh, there's no help over the top. Bump and run, so you got to get your bump and run beaters again. That's, you know, with some motion. Um, that's how you can beat the bump and run and look to get the ball out of the, out of the quarterback's hand quickly because the pressure is coming. So uh, these are your basic defensive concepts, and I, I know that it was a long one again. This is another 35-minute video, not another long video. All you guys out there wondering, hey, Skips, how, how are you getting 35 minutes on YouTube? Exactly. But... Ladies and gentlemen, for another exciting show, show number 69, it is not your den, it is not my den, but it is the Mad Den, a.k.a. the Laser Show, the internet's most passionate show about John Madden football. You and me together, Madden Bible Nation, a whole lot of you with just a little tiny, tiny itsy bitsy part of me, we're changing the Mad community, aren't we?